Hey, it's Debbie Potts, and I am recording a special podcast video blog vlog to dive into some topics I wanted to share with you after racing the turkey trot 10K race on Thursday, Thanksgiving, obviously, and then uh, running trails this weekend and listening, watching, observing social media trends right now. And as we focus on this podcast to talk about the aging endurance athlete, how best to fuel, train, and perform your best so you can thrive as you age. So how do you fuel in and around your workouts? How should you train each day? How should you recover from your workouts? How do you prioritize sleep and how do you manage your stress? So I call it the holistic method, really working on more than just your exercise. We need to work on what we are eating, when, why, how, where, as well as sleep, quality sleep, prioritizing how you start your day and how you end your day to have good recovery in your sleep. And stress management, because everything we do goes out the window if we are chronically stressed out from external stressors and internal hidden sources of chronic stress that all accumulate because they all go into your beaker of stress, your hypothalamus, and we can experience all sorts of stressors all into one and the bucket gets filled up fast. So if we have chronic stress, we need to work on that first and working on acute stressors from our exercise is good. And acute stress is the hot, cold therapy and your workouts and eating, not eating. But what I wanted to start with is resting metabolic rate. As we are trying to improve the aging process, improve performance. And a good example is a 10 K race. And most people do the Turkey trot on Thanksgiving for fun. It's a tradition We've done the one here in North San Diego and Sanitas for three years now, since we moved down here from Seattle and it's just fun, but it's interesting as a coach and someone that does metabolic testing and been involved in this industry as a trainer, coach, practitioner for 30 years, I see people running a 10 K race as if it is a five K race. And especially when it is a two lap race, because it's a five K starts after our race, but the 5k and the 10k. So people have two laps to do. So it's a great opportunity to pace yourself and build up and go faster the second lap. But I saw a lot of people being anaerobic, huffing and puffing from the very beginning. So that's one topic I would love to dive into more. The other topic is people struggling with weight gain as they age and struggling with how to train best to improve their performance. But I think you really hopefully are focusing on your aging process and how you're best fueling and training for your future to be your best self. Now, resting metabolic rate, you don't know what you don't know. So we need to test and not guess and identify where your limiters are, your limitations, what's holding you back from being your best self. So we don't know unless we do a full assessment. Now, Panoe metabolic testing is one piece of the puzzle. So we want to collect clues from multiple sources, not just do one lab test and say, this is what we need to work on. We want to look at the whole picture and not treat lab results or treat testing results, but treat the whole person. And so I wanted to go into resting metabolic rate because this is an area we can choose to improve if we have the right tools and the right knowledge and personalizing our program. Because as we age, as I'm experiencing as a 53, wait, how old am I? 52, 52, I'm not 53. I'm born in 71. So 52, November 5th was my birthday. And as I age, I'm on a goal. I heard this from a interview on Smartless, really funny podcast. If you want just a funny show to listen to and not have to think, uh, smart list interviewed Steph Curry and he was talking about aging. And he said the comment about 
staying youthful. So I'm starting to stay, say that instead of getting older, improving the aging process, I really like saying, I just want to stay youthful because even though I am in my fifties, I struggle to say that age and I feel, and I want to stay in my like 45. I feel like I'm that, I don't know what I need to do my metabolic tests. I know what my biological versus chronological logical ages, but I feel that I'm younger than I am. So my mindset is staying youthful. What can I do to improve the aging process to create my future self? So I'm staying youthful as I age. Metabolic rate, doing the metabolic test with Pinoe, we do a 10 minute measurement of your breathing. So what I want to go into is a huge rabbit hole as I always want to know why. So I'm adding more of these why podcasts and videos on my YouTube channel for you. If you like to geek out and you always wonder why, like here living in North San Diego, how does the tide work? <laughs> how is it super high tide and low tide? And how is the moon connected to the ocean and the tide and how's the marine layer? Just things I always want to know why, like where do the lizards go when it's not hot out? <laughs> Where are the snails when it's not wet out? It's really funny to me. So with my tangent here for a topic you might be interested is on the video version, but it's all on debbiepotts.net, how we determine your resting metabolic rate, resting metabolic rate. So when we do a Pinoe test, the 10 minute resting metabolic rate, we're measuring with a face mask on an air analyzer, your volume of oxygen in and your carbon dioxide out. So I want to just look up. What does that even mean? What is your metabolism? Because if you are trying to improve the aging process, but I didn't finish my thought, my, as I age, I'm struggling to, you have to work harder to not get slower. So I feel, if you feel like you're getting slower, fatter, and you're not recovering as well, we need to change how we train, right? I've been saying that all year. If you are lacking speed, power, and strength, we need to stop doing what we've been doing that might've worked in the past and revisit our training plan, looking at what is my metabolism at rest? How is my exercise metabolism? Am I working too much in a certain training zone? Where do I start to get fatigued? How is my performance? If you're a biker, how is your strength output? Where do you start to lose power and runner? If you are getting faster, where do you start to struggle? We want to identify our limitations, our limiters and our areas of opportunity because then we can put that into our investigation. And then we can create the ideal personalized fueling training program for you performance-based, right? So we can look at resting metabolic rate, exercise metabolism, and figure out how many calories do you need at rest? So resting metabolic rate, let's dive into that. So I'll read some notes, but you can go to my website and read the article I put together on my deep dive into what is metabolism? How do we get, how many calories do you need to burn at rest by just measuring my breath while I lay still for 10 minutes? How does that work? So a metabolism analyzer, if we analyze your breath, we're collecting your breath, right? So it's 10 minutes. You have the mask on. It's designed to collect what you inhale and what you're collecting your exhaled air, which is oxygen and carbon dioxide. The Pinoe analyzer measures a concentration of oxygen O2 and carbon dioxide CO2 in the exhaled breath. This is typically done using sensors and analyzers that can quantify the gas levels with high precision. So that is what I am using on clients here in North San Diego, Solana Beach, and Del Mar. Now, metabolic calculations based on the measured levels of oxygen consumed and carbon dioxide produced, the Pinoe metabolic analyzer can calculate the respiratory exchange ratio, which we've talked about before called RER. 
and thus we can find the resting metabolic rate, RMR. The respiratory exchange ratio is the ratio of carbon dioxide produced by carbon dioxide produced to the oxygen consumed. So oxygen, the ratio between CO2 and O2. RER provides information about the fuel source being used for metabolism. During macronutrients, your carbs, fat, and proteins are your macros, have distinct RER values. Resting metabolic rate, your RMR, is an estimate of the number of calories the body needs at rest to maintain basic physiological functions. It is calculated based on the oxygen consumption and carbon dioxide production using the formulas, as we discussed, related to gas exchange to the energy expenditure. So now, you know, respiratory exchange ratio is RER. That's the ratio of the carbon dioxide to the oxygen. And the RMR is the estimated number of calories the body needs at rest to maintain basic physiological functions. So that is it just the no exercise, no daily movements just to survive. Okay. So we get that number when we do your metabolic test. Now the Pinoy metabolic and now analyzer is a non-invasive real-time assessment by resting, me measuring your resting metabolism, because we're analyzing the composition of your exhaled breath. This gives us information to help you figure out your nutrition and exercise program. And so then I wanted to know, okay, RMR, yes, it's the number of calories we need at rest to maintain basic physiological functions. But how, how do we get that number? So I was asking Pinoy and my rep there, Pablos, and I wanted to know more. So give me all these articles, but I looked this up because how does it calculate? You just, you're breathing. How does that give me a number? Say I need 3000 calories a day. So RMR again, repetition is good to sink, get this in is a measure of the number of calories the body needs at rest, right? To maintain. So we went over that the metabolic or the physiological functions are maintaining body temperature, organ function, other essential processes. The estimated RMR is based on the principle of indirect calorimetry, which involves, as you know, oxygen consumption and carbon dioxide. So the basic idea behind the calculation is to understand the respiratory exchange that occurs during metabolism. Different macronutrients, carbohydrates, fat, proteins are metabolized with distinct oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange ratio. So we went over RER. So what is RER? When I'm looking at someone's metabolic test, again, it's 10 minutes. And then we do it for the exercise test, which is a parameter check, warm up, say 10 minutes. And then the actual test when we're measuring everything is say 12 minutes, max nine to 12 minutes where you hit your VO two max. And then we measure two minute recovery, but the fuel source, how do we figure that out? So remember RER is the ratio divide oxygen by carbon dioxide, carbohydrates, RER is 1.0. If I'm looking at how much fat you're burning at rest and during exercise, RER is 0 0.7. Carbohydrates, 1.0. Proteins can vary, but typically between the values of carbs and fat. So we don't really talk about proteins because we're not looking at them as a fuel source. We're just looking at fat to carbohydrate. So to estimate the RMR, resting metabolic rate, the amount of oxygen it consumed is related to the calories burned. So I had to look this up to get this whole equation. So you can read it on my blog page, but if you really are curious, as I always am, RMR, the in calories, calories in per day, oxygen is liters per minute multiplied by energy equivalent for oxygen, which is the amount of energy calories in produced when one liter of oxygen is consumed, this value can vary slightly depending on the source, but commonly used value is around five calories per liter of oxygen. So then the formula is two times five RMR, the RMR equals 
volume of oxygen times five. So Panoe metabolic analyzer, just for example, because that's what I use, but other devices are out there. They use algorithms and calibration procedures to convert the measured oxygen consumption into an estimated estimate of the resting metabolic rate. So these algorithms take into account factors as the respiratory exchange ratio, which you know what that is. Remember 0.7 fat, 1.0 carbohydrates, individual characteristics, some additional physiological information we might collect to improve accuracy of estimation. Now it's important to note that the RMR resting metabolic rate provides a baseline for calorie expenditure at rest. The total daily energy expenditure is called TDEE, TDEE, total daily energy expenditure, would include additional calories burned through physical activity and the thermic effect of food. So, and we go more rabbit holes. RMR is a crucial component in understanding your overall energy needs, right? But that's our basis. But what if we're moving around? What is kind of just general daily activities? Then we go into what TDEE is. So that amount is a total number of calories an individual burns in a day, taking into account all activities, including basal metabolic rate or resting metabolic rate that we're measuring in Pinoy, your physical activity and thermic effect of food. So to determine your TDEE, it is essential for understanding your individual overall energy need and crucial for designing personalized nutrition and your exercise plan. So here's the breakdown of the components that make up TDEE. So your BMR or RMR, number of calories your body needs at rest to maintain physiological functions. I'll test that in the Panoe test. Then we look at physical activity, all forms of physical activity in from intentional exercise to everyday movements. As you're just walking the stairs, you're moving around, getting up, fidgeting, the more active the person is, the higher their energy expenditure is from physical activity. And then we have the thermic effect of food, which would be another show to dive into. What does that mean? This is the energy expenditure during digestion, absorption, and metabolism of food. Different macronutrients, your remember, carbs, fat, proteins are your macros, require varying amount of energy for digestion and utilization. On average, TEF, thermic effect of food, contributes to about 10% of your TDEE, okay? So how do you figure out the TDEE? Another rabbit hole. So the TDEE is found by taking your resting metabolic rate plus your physical activity plus the thermic effect of food. So you'd have to know what you're eating in a day to get a sample of what that is. So accounting for TEF is that typically a fixed percentage of the total calorie intake for the day based on your macronutrient composition of your diet. So you can figure that out to understand your energy balance, helping you adjust your calorie intake to meet your goals. If it's weight maintenance or weight loss or muscle gain, I would rather talk about recomposition of losing fat weight, gaining lean tissue, increasing your metabolism. Because the next rabbit hole I went into, how can we improve our metabolism? How can we can improve our total daily energy expenditure? Because it's based on our metabolic rate. So how do we increase our resting metabolic rate, the foundation? How many, without doing any activity, how can I increase that number? Thermic effect of food. What am I eating? What foods would help me improve the thermic effect of foods? I'm burning more calories from eating. And I would think that would be protein increasing physical activity, right? Of obviously, but I think we do too much endurance exercise and I'm trying to get you guys to do more interval training as aging athletes, not do for females we need to do different amount of zone two than the male athlete. And we need to do different type of hit training and doing it properly. Cause most people do it wrong. 
and don't actually do true hit training to go zone four, zone five, down to zone one, back up. And then we want to move more throughout the day. So getting those movement snacks, moving, getting up periodically when you're working at your desk, sit down, but also stand up at your desk, you know, mix it up. But really looking at building your lean mass, really focus on improving the aging process. So I stay youthful. That doesn't mean do more cardio. To me, it means increasing my, improving my speed, power, and what I say, speed, power, and body composition. I want to get faster. I want to get leaner, stronger. I didn't say, I said speed, power, and strength. So I need to not do long distance cardio to change my body composition. I personally, Debbie Potts needs to do less volume and shorter quality workouts and spend more time lifting heavy weights, adding in plyometrics and getting my body to get stronger and working on interval training when I'm running, when I'm biking, when I'm swimming to improve my specific sport, specific speed and not do as much long, slow distance because that's making me slower as I get older, I'm already slowing down. So to counteract the age effects of age and my lower amount of hormones, it is not trying to eat less and do more cardio. That's what it comes down to. If you want to lose weight, change your body composition, stay youthful, improve your future self, look at what happens as we get older, remember that, and think of what you can control. It's exercise. What type of exercise, your frequency, intensity, your duration, your type, and stop thinking you need to do more cardiovascular exercise to lose weight as zone two, especially as females. We already are good at zone two. That's not helping us change our body composition and improve metabolism. What improves your metabolism? Increasing your lean body mass. So strength training helps build and maintain lean body mass. Muscle tissue is metabolically active, which means it requires more energy at rest as compared to fat tissue. So just focusing on losing fat isn't the solution. You should, we should ideally be focusing on improving strength, improving muscle mass, increasing your lean body mass. Focus on that and the fat issue will change. Staying active throughout the day, avoiding long periods of sitting, taking breaks as I should right now, stand, stand up, stretch, walk throughout the day. This helps contribute to NEAT. N-E-A-T and helps burn additional calories. So just always kind of moving around as I'm doing right now. So stay active throughout the day, break up times of sitting. Then we have optimized nutrition and that's getting the right amount of protein. And as we've been speaking about for months and meal timing, getting that 12 hour fast from dinner to breakfast and then eating your meals, timing it with your exercise. So you are not eating too much before workout. You're having more protein, a post-workout woman focusing on hitting like a protein shake with just the protein, 20, 30 grams of protein, 30 minutes post-workout. And when men can go up to three hours in their window, but women, we need to just have a, a whey protein and some water blended together. And then time your meals when you're ready to digest your food. So some ideas are small frequent meals, increasing the thermic effect of food. I don't like snacking for people. We tend to eat mindlessly. So we want to be mindful and having two good meals a day and having essential amino acids and having a protein drink as whey protein with some ice and water, and maybe you're adding some adaptogens in there and maybe post-workout you're adding in some frozen berries or quarter frozen banana and frozen avocado chunks are great to make it nice and thick and yummy. Now, so that's meal timing and balanced diet. Now, sleep is huge. You'll talk about in other episodes. We will talk in future episodes on this quality sleep. 
if you are stressed and, and sleep deprived and you're not prioritizing sleep and you're eating late, you're drinking a lot of alcohol, which is another topic I want to go into. I think people drink way too much alcohol. And I think drinking once a week, twice a week is plenty, but people drinking alcohol more than one drink a night, every night, I would be concerned. And it damages your deep sleep. If you track your sleep, it goes in the garbage when I have alcohol. So quality sleep and managing your stress is huge hydration with proper mineral balance and then avoiding extreme diets. So that can impact your basal metabolic rate. So going back to muscle health, a big deep dive into muscle protein synthesis we've been doing lately and resistance training that is going to play a role in improving your resting metabolic rate. So not cardio, not more excessive cardio, but improving your metabolic rate. So you can read all this in my blog because it goes on and on and on. I just looked up stuff. So muscle mass, basal, mono, basal metabolic rate, you're testing that two to three months, your muscle protein synthesis and listening to Dr. Gabrielle Lyon and Donald Lehman talking about the leucine threshold and making sure your protein timing that throughout the day and making sure your protein that you're having ideally animal versus plant-based to hit that leucine threshold, which is really challenging to get enough of the amino acid profile you need to get the right amount of leucine, say it's like 2.7 to 3.0 grams of leucine in that amino acid profile to get the right amount of amino acids to hit that muscle protein synthesis goal of say 30 to 50 grams spread out throughout the day. And then hundred grams or more. And as you know, one gram of protein per pound of ideal body weight. So more information on how to improve your metabolism on my blog page, debbiepotts.net going into exercise and HIIT training and energy cost of protein synthesis and insulin sensitivity. We can go into this again, and then I continue down this rabbit hole and it gets really deep, uh, muscle protein. How do we do that? Getting those essential aminos, as I just spoke about leucine, protein timing and distribution, protein quality and quantity, and then looking at how muscle related factors contribute to enhanced resting metabolic rate. Um, well that's repetition there, but, and then going to the female athlete and looking at protein oxidation and how Stacey Sims research on protein has a good article I copied in here with the links to her blog page. And then what are the best foods to help with muscle protein synthesis? You know, looking at getting your omega-3 fatty acids and your CLA, which is higher conjugated linoleic acid with grass-fed beef. I was looking up what is in grass-fed beef, what is in steak and on and on and on. Lastly, you can go and read the other section on here is what is the best type of exercise to improve muscle health and resting metabolic rate. So looking at your resistance training, what type of exercise for resistance training, for cardiovascular training, flexibility, mobility training, you know, getting all that into a comprehensive exercise program is important. And then a female with their hormones and her menstrual cycle, and then pre peri postmenopausal, you know, really looking at strength training, power training, speed training, proper nutrition, getting your protein, and then going into how women can do that is what we can talk about. And you can go back to my many other podcasts that I've been working on, just lifting heavy stuff and resistance training is the best way to generate those muscle making cells, lifting heavy, provide strength building stimulus as we need it more as our estrogen declines. Heavy lifting is good for improving fat burning metabolism, building bones and your cardiovascular health. This means three to five sets of six or fewer reps to muscle fatigue at six with full rest, two to five minutes between sets with proper form. And you're doing big lifts as deadlifts, squats, lunges, Olympic lifts that spread the force out among muscles, connective tissue and joints. And then we've got plyometrics as doing a squat jump. 
And then we've got sprint interval training as doing a 20, 30 second sprint. So really important part there. I've done other episodes on, but going past, I just talked about this in a previous episode. When you females that are middle age, my age, the best type of exercise is high intensity interval training, super short, sharp sprint style interval. Stacy Sims talks about the 30 seconds or less. If you are doing intervals, ladies past 60 seconds, if you're in and around say over 40 cortisol, it's a good surge of energy, but you don't want those stress hormone levels to stay elevated longer than necessary to get the job done. If you're in menopause, when cortisol can already be elevated, doing longer intervals is not going to help you. As we talked earlier, stress, chronic stress will impact everything. Metabolic chaos. You can read my book on Amazon called life is not a race. It is a journey. There's a reason I do what I do today. So sprint intervals, Stacey Sims says you can still get the benefits, improved insulin sensitivity, stronger mitochondria, improved fat burning, and an ever important boost of growth hormone after you finish. Tabatas are a great example. 20 seconds all out, recover 20 seconds all out. So check Stacey Sims articles for the female, how to power your way through menopause, looking at strength training, power, speed, your nutrition recovery, looking at box jumps, broad jumps, squat jumps, tuck jumps. Those are all lateral jumps, split. I mean, there's all sorts of things. If you can't do jumping because your knees, joint issues, then I would look at doing them in the pool, doing them on a rebounder, using the bow suit, doing the ball slams, doing rope slams. And then what are strength barbell squats, deadlifts, bench press, an overhead squat press, bent over rows, pull-ups or assisted pull-ups, dumbbell lunges, deadlifts, kettlebells or barbell you can do, pull-ups if you're getting really good at them, weighted pull-ups, front squats, a barbell in front of your shoulders. I don't like using the bar and I'm working on structural issues, so I'm not... Uh, able to do heavy weight related stuff until I get this neuromuscular figured out my left side, but doing barbell squats or free weights or kettlebells is great, but a barbell or Smith rack on your back is great. Anyways, lots of thoughts there. I don't have time to go into too much more, but just lastly, to go into this slide. Daniel Crumbeck, my mentor on metabolic training, we did two podcast episodes you should go back and listen to for athletes training with heart rate. If you are doing zone two, let's test and determine zone two. You could be doing all your workouts in zone three. The 10K race people on the turkey trot, they should be in zone three, then pick it up into zone four on their second lap. Zone four for 10K doesn't work. So when you're looking at this chart, if you're watching my video, Daniel Crumbach created this. Zone one is recovery. So zone two is your long, slow distance. Zone two training, Maffetone. We talked about forever. The max aerobic function heart rate would be in this zone two. Tempo, zone three. That's going to be my 10K pace. 10 to 20 minute effort. You're doing that, you're training, and then you go slow half the time. It's two work to rest ratio, 2.5 to one. So four to eight minutes, I'm going back down to zone one, and then I go back up. That's how you want to train for your 10 k race, your half marathon. So if we have a long interval, that's going to be top of zone three, bottom of zone four. That would be five to 10 minute pieces with two and a half minutes to five minute recovery, depending on how long your interval was. So it's two to one ratio. If I did a zone four interval, that's 30 to 90 seconds. That would be an RPE of eight to nine, one to one ratio. So my recovery in zone one, staying down in zone one, not just hit there, but I'm in zone one for 30 to 90 seconds. And then if I'm doing sprint interval training, it is 10 to 30 seconds in zone five, not getting there. I need to hit zone five and stay there 10 to 30 seconds. Then I'm coming down 
for 20 to 30 or 20 to 60 seconds, I'm coming down recovering in zone one, not hit there and start again, but stay there for 20 to 60 seconds. So that would be interval shit or sit, sit training, sprint interval training, medium long intervals. That would be your hit training 30 to 90 seconds or yeah. Yeah. 30 to 90. If I'm doing tempo, it's five to 10 minutes, kind of long intervals, but more tempo longer, typical is 10 to 20 minutes and then zone two. So something to think about. Another topic I want to go into a little bit more, the role of mitochondria, NAD and nitric oxide. We'll talk about that, how age-related declines in NAD to various tissues. Interesting article here. You can go back and read and sirtuins and looking at how to improve our NAD levels. That's coming up on another podcast, not selling supplements, but just learning more about NAD because everyone has uh, NAD injections in San Diego. So I wanted to go into that. So if you want to improve NAD levels, check this article out and then Stacy Sims. Then I want to go into Dr. Dan Plews on NGRIQ talking about carbs. Cause that's another big topic. People are talking about carbs timing. And then if you look on injury IQ, right fuel, right time, that's a great chart to find. And women might be a little different than this chart. Okay. So men and women aren't exactly the same as we know. Research articles. You can see the links on the injury IQ articles, peak oxidation, more information. And really what I'll be doing is I'm testing more starting January, looking at how we can improve our metabolism and women versus men and then women, different times of their cycle. So hopefully that gives you some ideas, some reading material and a deep dive into how to improve your resting metabolism. Thanks for listening. Let me know what you want me to dive into next time.